That's what the handout looks like. Okay. okay. I just took the same words that were little tiny in the articles and made them big so y'all can see them better. Who's lost? We all good? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's get this roll. Roll in. Roll in. All right. So hang on to that. We are going to go back here. Oh, okay. I'm going to get my plot. So all this stuff down here on this page is like stuff for me to use in class or things that I've read that help me, um, you know, come up with the content that we have in class today. So, can we see that okay? Professional behaviors, these are class slides. And what we're doing in this class today is we're talking about transition into the professional practice that you're going into, right? And so you are going to be a professional. You've been acting like a professional the last four semesters, so you know what, what's up, you know? You know how to behave in a professional way. Um, so part of that is going to be clean, staying clean, clean uniform, pulling our hair back so our hair doesn't fall into the bed with the patient or that the hair doesn't obstruct, obstruct my view to be able to, to work um, properly. Um, so just know that I'm the biggest fan of self-expression. I'm totally a fan because I think it builds belonging and, and, and inclusion, which is hugely important for all of us to feel like we belong and are included at work. Um, but infection control, and safety can trump our self-expression. So, you know, so if it's a safety thing, you know, if you're working in, um, I don't know, mental health or whatever, if you have a long necklace on, everybody knows that that can be grabbed and now somebody that's mentally altered is now has you by the neck. So safety and infection control can trump self-expression. However, if it's like religious practices that say, oh, I can't, I can't cut my beard, you know. Well, then maybe we just have to put you into a different department while COVID numbers are really high because we can't have you being exposed. So it's kind of common sense, right? All right, so when you get a job, they're going to usually give you like a picture of this is what I want you to look like. I really think like way up here at the, at the eye side of the patient, easy to um, see his name. Um, they both look clean and tidy and approachable. They both look very, very um, professional. What about these two? How about the guy on the left? Does he look professional? Sure. How about the guy on the right? What's the drawback? His hair. His hair. What if he's draw, bending over and drawing labs? You know, that hair will obstruct his vision, it can fall into the patient. So that's the only thing for him. Well, how about his demeanor? Is it okay? He looks great. He's smiling. Would you approach him and ask him a question? Do you feel comfortable approaching him? Yeah, I do too. I do too. He just needs to look at that. Both these guys look professional? short beard so once again when the, if, the, if, the, if he's in a unit that you know we're, we're wearing n95 he's gonna have to get his um a, a n95 fitting to make sure that he's protected and safe what about the tattoos fine that's fine right <laughs> most of us are coming with this who is totally opposed to having a, a nurse take care of them that's got tattoos around? who just is not happy you're not having it? No, no. Oh, you're, you're cool with it. Yeah. Cool no. is just not I'm having it. Our 80s I'm and 90 year olds. All right. The facility may not want. Yeah. 
but the facility may not want, and the facility may have a <coughs> policy, mm -hmm. you know, how you're supposed to look. And we have to follow that policy. However, where's the data? Um, I, I just know for me personally that my mom, we had my dad in the home for eight years with progressive dementia, mm -hmm. and during COVID, like we lost all the people coming in, in the homes to help care for my dad. And any people that would come up, you know, that they would say, I have somebody but they got tattoos, is that okay? And we're like, yes, yes, we need, we need help, oh my God, they're wonderful caregivers. So where is the data that the tattoos are unprofessional? You know, where is the data that we're upsetting our patient population? So that might be how you need to look at, you know, the policy at your institution. You know, you have to follow policy because you may go through disciplinary action if you disobey. However, how do we go through the process of changing the uniform or changing the dress around here? What's that method, right? Because, um, you know, are we using antiquated, like back in the 60s, I think people, you know, my, my old mother back in the 60s, I remember her going, oh, he's got a tattoo. Like, yeah, I don't know, he's rough or something like that. And so she had this bias. And, um, um, you know, I guess she was trying to pass that on to me as her child. You know, ooh, tattoos are bad people, you know. <laughs> people with tattoos. But then, of course, that's not the thing. It's a self expression. And so, anyway, I just want you to start looking at policies and how can you change policies to fit the needs of, of the employees that we are today, right? Because we're not from the 60s. <clears throat> Um, and then, of course, how does the girl look, the female nurse look? Approachable, she's smiling, she looks like a nice nurse, she looks like somebody you can ask the question. These two, beautiful people, right? They look professional, they're smiling. Once again, the beard, if he's on a unit where he's gotta be safe, I don't <coughs> think he's gonna get a tight seal. I know that um, uh, our um, director of ICU during COVID, we, our unit was COVID land. It was COVID, COVID, COVID. And Tina had to have conversations with a bunch of our guys that had beards, you know, and, you know, it was like touchy, you know, because they like how they look with their beards. But her problem was she had to keep them safe and safe and healthy so they could come and take care of all these patients on the unit with COVID. So just know that if you have a beard, you know, that you may, you know, have to talk about, where's that man? Let's, I see a man in the back door. You know, oh, oh, you have a beard. <laughs> you have a beard. Yeah, so how would, where, where are you working? Um, I work at uh, West Jeff on the. At West Jeff? Yeah. Okay, did you have a beard during COVID? Were you working during COVID? No. No? no I was retired. You were what? I was retired. Oh, you were retired? Yeah. Oh, where did you retire from? I was a fireman. A fireman, thank you oh, for awesome. coming to nursing and thank you for all your years of service. I'm glad Anytime. that you survived and-, and We do. <laughs> and I, I hope you had AC, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. So how would you feel if our COVID numbers are sky high and everybody's wearing the big masks? How would you feel if I was your supervisor and said, you know, I- I don't care. You don't care. No, I, I, could, I couldn't have one as a as a fireman because oh. of the mask. Oh, oh, oh because, because of the mask seal. fitting. Yeah. Okay, so we do that in the fire department too. Right. So you kind of and you know you get it. Yeah. I gotta be safe. I gotta be healthy. Yeah. Right. So safety trumps self expression. So you would say, okay, I'll shave it. Mm -hmm. You know, COVID numbers are high. I'll shave. It. So that's kind of like the discussion that we have to have. And I'm always like, uh, I'm, I'm such a fan of self expression, but I also have to keep you safe. So we all just have to be on board with that. Are we good with that? Mm -hmm. We're all good? Well, well, all the women are saying we're fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but then, how's this guy? Is he professional? No. Huh. Look at his demeanor. He's horrible. Are you gonna stop and ask him for directions in the hospital? No. Right? Um, so the demeanor is really the important thing. Um, now, I will, I have this link here too, because I, I guess last year, somebody was working at the airport and she had long hair and it wasn't tied back. And remember I said safety, do y'all remember the incident? 
her hair got caught in the wheels of the baggage conveyor oh. belt. Okay. Yeah. She, she was killed. It was this young, beautiful person who was killed. And, you know, and that's a safety thing. So if we could go back in time, she would gladly put her hair up and pulled it back, you know. But um, so I just want y'all to think about that. Somebody young and beautiful was killed. I can't believe that was not in the policy. Was it not in their written policy? I would think it was. I don't know. I didn't, well, I didn't go and explore. It was. was it in their written policy? It was. She was, it was? Just helping out. Yeah, she was just helping out. That wasn't oh. even her, where she was supposed to be. But she, there was shark hands or something like that, oh, and she went yeah. helping them out. So they should have told her, because mm -hmm. they oh. should have told her. So that sounds like a big lawsuit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If they didn't train her properly, mm -hmm. and they had her helping out. Yeah. So that's a big, you know, we learn from stories. So just think, if somebody's coming onto your unit to help out, mm -hmm. think about what we need to do to train them so that they're safe mm -hmm. on our unit. You know, if they come up and we're in COVID land and they don't have on the N95, we need to say, oh no, that little blue mask is not gonna cut it. Let's get you fitted. So I, thank you so much for sharing that. Did you know this person? I'm friends with the cousin. Mm -hmm. I'm just so sorry. That, I, I, I was just so devastated to, mm -hmm. to hear that story. So safety and infection control kind of trumps self-expression and then is we need to be mindful about making sure everybody is safe. And then I love this little slide here, is like this doctor is like, hey, you're judging me, I might be saving you life one day. So, you know, yes, the times have changed, and should we revisit policy, we can't just disobey policy, but we need to try to find how can we change policy. So this, this girl, this woman looks great. She's got great demeanor, she's got a great smile, she's got her ID tag on. We want to avoid, in the workplace, being loud, arrogant, superior, or, or pessimistic, and, and insubordination, like, I'm just not gonna follow that, that policy, right? We want to keep a positive attitude, we want to show up on time and honor our commitments. We want to make be hopeful and keep uncluttered workstations. Um, keep our pro personal problems to ourselves, avoid gossiping and bullying. And no complaining, don't do drugs, and don't violate patients' um, privacy. So, we said no bullying. But, unfortunately, we have a dirty little secret in nursing. Because nursing is like Gallup polls always say, oh, who's the most trusted profession? Nursing, every year, every year. But, um, you know, this is a book I just read, Do No Harm. It applies to nurses, too. Strategies to protect yourself and bullyproof yourself at work. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that we have to write books like this? Mm -hmm. You know, or, um, or this one. Uh, bullying among nurses, what every nurse manager needs to know. So, um, here's uh, nurse managers leading the way to maintaining, uh, re re to reducing stress to, by maintaining healthy workplace environments. Implementing AAPN's healthy workplace environment. Nurse administrators is cause of moral distress among nurse educators. Um, qualitative research study. So unfortunately, everything I pick up is like what's going on with lateral violence, horizontal violence, incivility in nursing, um, microaggressions, aggression, racism, you know, discrimination. So that is happening in our workforce. And um, and bullying is a real thing. So raise your hand. Has anybody witnessed somebody getting bullied? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, how? So raise your hand just so I can see. Witnessed or been the target? Witness. So it looks about half of us, and that's sixty-four percent of us in the workforce have have either seen it or experienced it. So you're not alone. I have. I've seen it. Uh, and uh, and bullying is not just one single bad day where I just go, what are you ba bugging me about now? And now if I've never done that to you before, I'm having a bad day. Mm -hmm. So that's one uncivil encounter. Mm -hmm. Is it right? Uh-uh. And you need to correct me right away. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I don't want to be spoken to like that. What's up? Mm -hmm. 
I, I I don't like your aggressive. You you're, you're kind of look aggressive, Kim. I you know it's making me feel threatened. You want to talk about something? You know, so we need to address it because I had to make fun last semester that was bullied, and she ended up quitting her job because it was coming from the manager, and the manager had friends, and so now she was getting mobbed, and um, and her she came and talked to us, and she said, you know, I wish I would have from the very beginning stood up for myself. But being new graduates, you're like, mm, not sure what to do because you're new. Right? You're not sure how to handle it. Um, and so that's what this course is today, with this activities that we're going to be about to do, is to try to equip you if, if it happens to you. Because 64% of us have seen it or have been the, the target of a bully in the workplace. Right, so, the, it, uh, so this behavior is you totally don't want it, right? It's unwanted behavior and it's repeated and it, it probably even escalates, gets more severe, right? And, um, and if I'm your manager, I've got power over you. So that plays a whole different thing. Now I'm abusing my position of power, right? And then, um, and it causes you stress, right? So all of that is bullying. It's not just one isolated thing. It can be verbal. It can be nonverbal. I can like, you can talk to me and I can just, um, roll my eyes, or you can talk to me and I'll, I can just turn my back and act like I don't hear you. Oh my goodness, that's horrible, right? That's bullying behavior. Ridiculing, undermining, minimizing your contributions or your <coughs> thoughts. Oh, you always think like that, you know, or you're always, you know, so liberal. Um, physical in, uh, intimidation, criticizing, excluding, hey, we're going to lunch. Oh, don't fight that. Let's just go. You know, excluding people, that's bullying. That's daddy. And um, why does it persist? Why do we, why does it continue? <clears throat> why does, because we're afraid. We're afraid that if I speak up, now I'm going to, the bully's going to get on me, right? Or if I speak, if I'm the target and I speak up, I'm scared about the bully retaliating against me. I'm, I'm scared it's going to get worse. So, um, and it could it persist if I'm in the culture of my environment where we don't stand up for one another and we don't speak up. Now, the good news is I'm baby boomer and my generation is uh, kind of like you don't speak up, you don't talk back, you know, you follow the orders. But the thing that gives me a lot of hope is like your generation is much better at standing up for themselves. So that gives me great hope for driving um, a culture of well-being and respect. And, and hopefully we can get rid, just get rid of bullies in the workplace. But we all have to work together. And that may mean if you witness her being bullied, that you're going to have to stand up and speak up. Because that's why it persists. We don't speak up. And if you see it, give the name, say the name, say what it is. Bullying. I want to report bullying. I, I witnessed a bullying, or I've been witnessing bullying between these two. That's, we want to say that word. Um, and you don't want to just re reduce it to uh, those indications that acting on the bull, or it was just a little microaggression. Why do you want to belittle horrible behavior that you do not want to work in your workplace? So say the word. Um, if you are being bullied, it's very important for you to start keeping notes, documenting. Because like I said, bullying is not one incident. It's several incidents. So I can say here on August 1st, they, they yelled at me in front of the patient. Um, on August 5th, um, they yelled at me in our meeting. You know, so you, you write these, in, these these occurrences down because if you report, you're going to need to have dates and times and exact behaviors that occur. Unfortunately, it, it may not be a peer; it could be your manager. So these are just some traits of like a fair manager and the bully manager. 
And yesterday in one of my classes, I had a student that shared like what her bully manager did, and it was like, oh my goodness. And they stayed in the management, they're still in their management position, and they're still behaving like that because no one's reported them. And when they got surveys sent out to them to evaluate kids' performance, they were scared to really say what they thought because they thought somebody was gonna be able to track them on the computers and they were gonna be retaliated. So there's a lot of fear involved and bullies are very good at making you afraid. Um, so the bully manager is unfair, impulsive, inconsistent, inflexible, um, always right, doesn't ask the team their thoughts. They're always telling the team what to do. Um, they, and then when you say, oh, you yelled, then they go, oh no, I didn't yell. She's lying. You know, so that's what the bully manager will do. Where the fear manager will go, oh, I did yell, and I did apologize to her right away, and I am, I was wrong, I knew right away. You know, that's the fear-minded that's manager that's self-aware. Um, so bullies are disrespectful, aggressive, poor interpersonal skills, and um, divides the team. So how do we go in and, and see, are there danger signs on, on this unit? Is something going on in this unit that seems toxic? Well, we can go in and we can look for poor performances, nurses who feel isolated, tons of rumors flying, turnover rates, people are quitting right and left, people are calling sick right and left, people are asking to be transferred out of this ICU down to you know, telemetry or something and the patients are complaining about the care that they're receiving. So what we wanna do is, um, so we need to go and collect information. So what is really going on? And we can get focus groups. So um, I need some volunteers to join a focus group on bullying in the workplace. So volunteer to, be able to, to, to join the focus group and give honest feedback. Surveys, answer the surveys honestly, because when they ask you, does your manager treat you with respect and they don't, you need to be courageous and say, no, they do not treat me with respect. That's the only way that that manager's superior can know that we got a problem with the way this manager's speaking to you guys. And, and, and their manager needs to say, how are we gonna improve these scores? I'm gonna send you to communication training and I need these scores listed, lifted by, by next year, right? So they do interventions to try to improve the manager. And the good news is when they review these, these the, your team's feedback with their supporters, <coughs> they do better, they do improve. And the in interviews are very telling, why did she quit? Why did she quit? What happened? We don't gather that information. The, the data is very small at most companies on exit interviews because they are so, they are so over it. I quit, I don't wanna to talk to any of y'all ever again and they're gone. But if we interviewed them, we would find out. I was bullied since the first day I walked in here and I'm not coming back to this place. I'm, I'm happy, I'm working someplace else and I'm thriving. So, you know, it's, it's um, you wanna look really hard and good at like what's going on in the unit that you're about to join. Um, because if there's, you know, bad behavior, you're gonna be experiencing bad behavior at work. And we, it's stressful, and we want to not have that stress in the workplace. Um, so, the simulation activity is not going to go down like it did yesterday. This room is way too small to do what we did yesterday. So um, I'm gonna ask you, so to start, yeah, I feel, I feel, can you find me, yeah. So um, we are about to start a simulation activity on disruptive behavior in the workplace. And um, I'm going to, we're gonna, I'm gonna get some people up here to help me act out bad behavior in the workplace, and then we're gonna talk about how can we use some, some feedback on this handout. We call this memorized scripts, and this is a best practice. And this is actually included in um, onboarding at new jobs. 
So if like, there's a bully situation in your unit, what can you say? Because most of us, what happens if you see something really bad, somebody yells or something in the workplace? What do you do? What do you tend to do? What do you do? You tend to do nothing. You tend to do nothing. Because most of us, like, there's a part in our brain that's like triggering like, oh, right? We freeze because we're startled at this bad behavior all of a sudden. And, um, and what we have to train ourselves to do is use some, some memorized little lines or scripts, you know, and today we're cognitively rehearsing how to do that. So I am going to put up the first scenario, scenario one, and I'm just gonna ask um, some help from my Good friends here. Do you mind being a target? Sure. Okay. And do you mind being a witness? Sure. All right. So we have a target and we have a witness. And I am going to be a bullet. So we all come up here with me. So we're on, um, which, which one are we doing? Simulation one. I don't even have a simulation. <laughs> Let me get it for me. Here I go. All right. So I'm the bully. Um, and you are my target, right? So, and I have this script right up here too that we're reading, so y'all can follow along. So I'm gonna start. I'm looking at you. What are you doing in here in the break room? You can't leave your patient like this. You are always taking breaks. So she's drinking her Gatorade. I was dehydrated from wearing my mask and came to hydrate. I'm sorry, I'll go right back at now. And now she goes out the door, like a, a, a good, <laughs> thinking a good nurse, right? All right, and then you're like, what are you doing? Sure. You're shocked, right? <laughs> and so and now I need an accomplice. Will you come help me real quick? So you're sitting in the break room and you see all this happen and then this is what you say. What is up with this new graduates? They're all so lazy. I'm so glad you got a back out there on the unit. <laughs> Who's she helping? Is she helping the target or the bully? The bully. So, She's like part of a mob now, right? Mm -hmm. She's in reinforcing me to behave this way, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I can tell you're a nice person. <laughs> okay, so why does she stay quiet? Why did this person is just in the mind her own business getting a cup of coffee? Why does she stay quiet? She doesn't want to get involved. Why doesn't she want to get involved? She don't want me following her around, right? She doesn't want to be the next target. She don't want to be the next target, right? Right? So now, let's. And how did you feel? Like I did something wrong. <laughs> did she do anything wrong to take a break and hydrate and get that N95 off and drink? Those N95s are very dehydrating, right? What about her well-being? If we just focus on her well-being, you know, bullying will dissipate, right? So what could we have said? What could the silent bystander, she's a silent bystander, what could she have said? Look at your handout and, and, and I, what do you see? The handout um, is like your like cognitive responses. What could we say? What could you say? Or could she say? Maybe she could um, go to the target and just sort of like something to like control her and let her know she's not, you know, there's nothing wrong. So okay. Really, okay. That aspect, I mean. So she's saying go, go to see her. So you go see her and tell, to comfort, say, I saw what happened. <laughs> but you need to also tell her I'm concerned that what I saw was 
not cool, was not good, was not healthy. And I saw that. So you let her know that she's not a witness for this. And, and then maybe you might want to encourage her, if this persists with that person, you may need to report her. But before we go straight to reporting her, what can we say on this list? What could we say? So we have to make it a habit to support the victim or the target, right? But if you look on your handout on scapegoating, let's look at that. Everything's going wrong with the, these new graduates, the, all these new graduates. What did you say? All these. Why is the, with the new graduates, they're all so lazy. They're all so lazy, <laughs> right? So scapegoating, the, 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 all these new graduates are the problem around here because they're all so lazy. So what, so if, if she's saying that, you could say, well, I don't think that's the right connection. I don't, I don't think that's the right connection. We, we need to hydrate to stay healthy. So you could have a lot of power in this situation, especially if, if, if you and I are peers, you know, we've been working together. If you need to correct me, and, um, but if, if you feel safe, now, if you don't feel safe with me, then you may have to report. But being lateral are on the same level. I'm not outpowering you. And one of the things that we can do is speak up to one another in a collegial, you know, kind of way, a supportive type of way, and um, and try to handle it without going through reporting, because then that's going to cause a lot more conflict. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate it. So, um, I might do one more. So we're gonna look, oh, thank you. Uh, motion two. Um, <coughs> Simulation three, because this is very complicated. So can I get a couple of more volunteers for simulation three? Um, okay, so I need a new grad. What are you doing? Come on up, you're the new grad. And I'll be the bully again. And, all right, so you're the new grad and you're the target. I'm the bully. I'm the new grad. Okay. Yes. So, so the new grad target calls the charge phone, charge uh, nurse on the phone. Okay. okay. I'm talking to you. So you're talking to me. I'm your charge nurse. Oh, okay. Hi, Julie. I was unsure how to enter the order for Mr. Smith for his electric procedure. Could you help me understand the system so I can put input the order? I said this to you before, Lisa. The instructions are in the orientation folder. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I'll try to figure it out. I'm sorry I disturbed you. And she hears me slam the phone down, right? Uh -huh. Right? <laughs> so now. Well, I hope I did this right. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I hope I put the order in right, right? So later, Lisa, you entered the orders on Mr. Smith incorrectly. I am gonna have to write you up for this and schedule a coaching meeting. You better get your act together if you want to stay working here. Nobody's gonna help me, okay? So the orders get entered wrong, right? And the charge nurse evaluates the new grad as making a big mistake out on her, her evaluation. Um, but the, the charge nurse doesn't include that she asked me. Okay, with me. Extra help. And what did I do? Let me drown. I'll let you drown. I didn't support you. And on top of that, I'll meet you. 
and I was aggressive, <laughs> and I was hostile. Very scared right now. <laughs> and, and do you want? Do you want? Do you want that? Do you want to deal with that in your daily work? Oh yeah, transfer. <laughs> right, you get it, and then you're going to leave a short staff, and then the, the we'll all suffer, right? So bullies are toxic, and bullies must be addressed. Um, so let's look at the scapegoating. Once again, the scapegoating is like, what could you say to me when I say, oh, you you put the orders in wrong? What's on the scapegoating feedback that we could say? Can you also be on your handout under mm -hmm. scapegoating? Mm -hmm. What could we say? I don't think that's the right connection. I don't think that's why the orders were put in wrong. That's not how it happened. <laughs> why were the orders put in wrong? Because you didn't tell me how to do it when you I asked you. Now, does that take a lot of courage to talk to your man to have that discussion mm -hmm. with your? It does. It does. It requires courage because I've outpowered you. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, I, and I feel for you. So you may be afraid to have the conversation with me, but you want to try to stand up for yourself because what everybody has said who have been bullied, I wish I stood up from the beginning because it only gets worse, more frequent, and has Thank you so much. Thank you. I would never yell at you like that. Ever. 